Hey guys, Darren Levine here. Got another quick tip for you. This one is about lens filters. Uh, I just want to give you a quick rundown of what they do. As you can see, we've got the uh, circular variety. If you have a matte box, you'll be using the square variety, I'm sure. But these are circular ones that go directly onto your lens. And I'm just going to give you a few uh, little rundowns about what each of them does, what you should have in your bag at all times. This, as you can see, looks kind of clear, which is exactly what it is. It is a UV clear uh, filter which, you know, even though it's supposed to be, you know, UV protective, it's really just protecting the lens in terms of physical, you know, poking and prodding. Um, hopefully no one's poking your lens, but, you know, just in case something happens to fly towards the lens, it's a lot nicer to lose something like this versus the entire lens itself, which would cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, some people prefer not to have any protection on it, just for the sake of, you know, having the best, you know, quality possible. But, you know, if you get a decent brand um, and a good quality filter, then you're probably not gonna lose any quality whatsoever by getting just putting this protection in front of your lens. So I do recommend that. And then you've got your other basic, which is the ND filter. I know it's built into a lot of your video cameras, but it's good to have a few other filters around because you can get them in different, um, you know, uh, strengths. That's the word I'm looking for. This is a three-stop one, which is very dark as you can see. And the neutral density filter, the ND filter, is just meant to reduce the amount of light. It's not meant to change the image in any other way. So the reason why we like this to have around in a highlight situation is that if you didn't have it and you didn't have built-in ND filters, then you probably have to use your aperture to cut down the light. And by doing that, by using a higher f-stop number, you're gonna make your depth of field a lot greater. And usually we don't like that in narrative film because we wanna have you know at least a little bit of background blur to pop the character out of the background. So. This is one of those key elements we need to make sure that we can always achieve at least somewhat of a shallow depth of field. So always have a couple of these around. Um, you can get them in different strengths. This is a three stop, a 0.9. You can always get a one, two, three, four stop. Um, so if your camera has them, great. You probably don't need any more than that, but you might want to get a few more to supplement it. If your camera doesn't have any, like an HDSLR, you're going to want to get a bunch of those. And then the last one we got is the kind of magical one because this, what this is, it's a circular polarizer. If this hand is the lens that's attached to, as you can see, I can rotate the front elements, the, well, the only element. But um, what it does is, that as you rotate it, it's cutting out different levels of reflected light. So what that does is it allows you to remove reflections. So if you're shooting, say, through a car window, where you normally would probably see reflections of the clouds or whatever, this can actually usually reduce or remove those reflections. So it's really, really useful too to get in uh, to having your bag. It's something you have a lot more trouble doing in post and this is the optical way you can do it correctly. Now, the other thing we just want to mention is obviously if you've got a lot of lenses, they probably don't have the same you know, filter thread sizes. Probably have, you know, you know, this one's a 62 and this one's a 72. Obviously you can't mount them on the same lens. You got to get the different sizes. Now you're probably thinking I got to buy, you know, every different type of filter for every different size lens. Not if you do your homework and watch this video and know that you can get step rings. As you can see, there's one size on this side and one size on this side. And what you can do, you can always take a bigger filter and put it in front of a smaller lens. You obviously can't go the other way around, but what you can do is get a step filter, put it on the, the step ring and attach it. This is not the correct one for this lens, but you get the idea. Um, I believe this one probably would work for, uh, yeah, this filter fits on this one. And I believe it fits on this particular lens, just like that. So that's what you can do. And you probably only need to purchase maybe two or three sets of filter sizes and then just get the step rings to fill in the blanks. So that's what I think you should keep in mind. Hopefully you get a couple of filters and have them in your bag. They're great useful tools on set and they'll probably enhance your production because you'll have to not fix less things in post. So this has been a quick tip with Darren Levine, BDHL.com. Happy shooting, guys.